Okay, this is going to be a short introduction to a new technique of integration called integration by parts. We'll just look at two examples here uh, to introduce you to this topic. So you probably already are familiar with techniques of integration such as U substitution, but it turns out that there are many techniques needed uh, for integration depending upon what you're actually integrating. Now in class you'll see the derivation um, of this formula, but the integration by parts formula says if you're integrating u dv, then that can be rewritten as u times v minus the integral of v times du. And again, the examples will probably clarify this formula and for a lot of you guys, seeing where this formula actually comes from will help too. That always helps me. Um, but just to give a, a small comparison, basically integration by parts is to integrating what the product rule is to deriving. So it's kind of like a way to handle products. Um, just a, a few quick notes and then we'll dive right in. Um, it's good to choose u, we'll see how we have a choice, to be something that becomes simpler when derived. So something that becomes simpler when derived. Um, this is again just a, a good idea in general. There are cases when you can't choose you to be something simpler, but um, in a moment we'll see a polynomial function times a trig function. Definitely we would choose u to be the polynomial function because we know that deriving a polynomial j just reduces the power, makes it simpler. Um, kind of by the same token, we want to be choosing dv to be something we know how to integrate. So I guess that's another important thing. So choose dv, this other part of the original integral, to be something uh, that you actually know how to integrate. And that's important because... Um, Let's take natural log as an example. Prior to this discussion, we know that the derivative of natural log is 1 over x, but we don't know the integral of natural log yet. Um, so those are just a few tips, and again, the more you practice these, the more comfortable you'll be. But just diving right in with you guys, let's try integrating x multiplied by sine of x with respect to x. So in general, our biparts formula says integrating u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. So in this case, looking at our problem, uh, we have, again, x times sine of x dx. And I'm looking at x to be something that when derived it becomes simpler, right? The derivative of x is just 1. Uh, and that would leave the remainder, sine of x dx, to be something that I need to know how to integrate. And it turns out we do know how to integrate sine. So here, a good choice of u will actually be just x. And we know that again because when we derive x, we get back just 1 with respect to x. If we had chosen sine of x for u, um, the derivative would have then been cosine, which isn't any simpler feeling than sine, right? So now we'll just talk about dv. So the original integral has to be the product of u and dv. So since we already let u be sine of x, Sorry, we already let u be x. That means dv is sine of x dx. So what's interesting about this thing I'm about to do here is we have dv and we're looking for v. That means we're actually anti-deriving or integrating. So we have to think about what the integral of sine would be, which would actually be negative cosine of x, right? Because if the derivative of cosine is negative sine, that means the derivative of negative cosine would be positive sine. So feel free to pause and make sure you agree with that right there. But what we're going to do now is walk back over to our original integral and simply ap apply the other side of the biparts equation. So I'm going to take u, 
which is x, and then I'll multiply it by v, and v here is negative cosine of x. So there's u times v. Then I need to subtract the integral of v, use v again, which was the negative cosine of x term, multiplied by du. And for us here, du is just 1 dx or just dx. All right, so now we're tasked with integrating this. And the thing about this process is it should be giving us an integral that we know how to handle now. Right at the very beginning, I maybe didn't mention, but integrating x sine of x dx, we didn't have a technique for handling a product, so that's why we have to use this new technique. So, uh, what I've done from lines two to line three here is just clean up a bit, and this front part, the negative x cosine of x term, it doesn't need to be integrated, it's just coming down for the ride here, and we do need to integrate cosine of x. So when we integrate cosine of x, that would give us back just sine of x, right? Because the derivative of sine is cosine. This is an indefinite integral, so I'll tag on our constant of integration. And this would now be the antiderivative or the integral of x sine of x. So that's it right there. Remember that anytime you have an indefinite integral, you can check your work by deriving. Uh, I won't show that here, but that's it for that one. And then let's try to squeeze in one more. I'll at least get you started on this next example. This one has x squared times e to the x being integrated. So as we think about applying this by parts formula, we need to consider what our choice of u will be and what our choice of dv will be. So again, we want to choose u to be something that becomes simpler when we derive it. So kind of the choices at this point based on this example are I could choose u to be x squared or I could choose u to be e to the x. And you probably recall that the integral of e to the x is just e to the x. So that doesn't feel a whole lot simpler. So that makes me think that x squared would probably be a good choice for you because when we derive x squared we get back 2x which again that's a linear now rather than a quadratic so it feels a little simpler that leaves behind for the remainder uh, e to the x dx so that piece must be dv and now what we're trying to figure out is if that's dv v is then the integral of e to the x and e is kind of friendly, the derivative of e to the x and the integral of e to the x are both e to the x. So now we have our pieces that we'll be plugging into our integration by parts formula. Um, so it starts off by saying take u, which for us was x squared, and multiply it by v, where v was e to the x, and then subtract from that the integral of v, so v again was, oops, I'm mixing my color, sorry. Uh, so v was e to the x, and then we multiply that by du, which was 2x dx. So if we just rewrite the second line for a moment, doesn't look too bad, but we're integrating now really 2x times e to the x dx. And the piece out front, the x squared e to the x is just there for the right now. This brings up a really interesting part of integration by parts, uh, which is the integration by parts formula can actually be applied multiple times. Now I know this is just an introduction, so I don't want to um, go too in depth here, but I'm going to leave you with this thought. This problem is not yet done. But interestingly, if I look at the integral, I really have another way to apply the integration by parts formula. Um, so in a sense, I could redefine a new u term as 2x, a new dv term as e to the x, 
and I'm essentially going to be applying the integration by parts formula again to this piece. So I hope you try it on your own. Uh, I know this is maybe your very first time seeing this topic, so talking in class will clarify more, but I hope you like it.